Hi guys, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesday. So this week we are on week six. So we're in week six. So this week we're going to be discussing your due diligence period. After you have found a buyer and they place an offer and you accept that offer, at this point we're in the due diligence period. Um, and the due diligence period, rule, well, not rule, tip number one, you want to make sure that you mark your calendar for when the end of the due diligence period ends. It's essential that you know, you and your agent, um, especially the buyer's agent, it's essential that everyone is aware of when the due diligence period ends. Tip number two, understand that your buyer can walk away and still get their earnings money back while they're in the due diligence period. So please ensure you know <laughs> that the shorter the due diligence period is, the better chance you have of the buyer staying and them not, you know, taking a chance and walking away from the house. Um, well, that probably won't happen here in Fayetteville just because there's not many houses available anyway. So whoever's going to walk away from a perfectly good sound house to go back in that market and still shop is out of their minds. Um, so tip number three. This is Wind Down Wednesday, right? Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Tip number three, be sure that um, um, you understand that the deciding factor of how much you're going to make off the sale of your house is going to be based on what that house appraised at. I just had a closing that happened yesterday and that house did not appraise at what we initially offered. So at that point, um, that seller had came down that house price because they wanted to sell that house. But as a seller, you are not obligated to sell your house at what the price, at the price that it appraised at. You can hold it and see if another person comes in and hopefully they won't have a government loan to where they have to do the appraisal. You, but you do not have to honor um, how much the appraiser says that your house is worth as a seller. It's in your best interest to do so, to come down on that price, just because, um, you know, the longer you keep your property, the, the longer, the more mortgage you're going to have to pay for that month. Um, so what are we on? Tip number four. Um, so at this point, uh, while you're within the due diligence period, the buyer should have um, also, uh, I'm lost for words. Maybe I need some more wine. Jesus. So the buyer should have also submitted a due diligence repair request. See that word. <laughs> so in this period, the, the, the buyer should have submitted that. Um, make sure that with that due diligence repair request, you ask for all the appropriate inspections. You want to make sure you have a reason as to why they're asking for the entire roof to be replaced. It had better been recommended by that home inspector or else me as a listing agent, I'm not going to recommend that you repair or you replace the entire roof just because the buyer wants the entire roof. So it helps to put reason behind some of the repairs that the buyer is asking for. So make sure you ask for all appropriate inspections reports uh, from the buyer for any repair requests that they request. And number five. <laughs> I love that. Number five, get quotes for any repairs that you agree to um, fix before you agree to anything. So if it takes you a couple days to go over the due diligence repair request because you're getting quotes from different contractors, do so. This will put you in a better position so that you're not agreeing to every repair and it'll wind up being a $20,000 bill that you have to pay. So that's it for week six. Uh, wind Down Wednesday. Come again for week seven.